I feel like I'm still writing, it's just I'm writing with images. I'm telling stories with images. Okay, Libo Hankanye, so nice to meet you and to meet you here in Switzerland in this beautiful place, uh, at, in this festival, Festival Image Veuve. So my first question is, what was your introduction to images? Was it when you were a child or did that come later in your life? How did you discover that world of images? I actually studied photography purely by chance. Um, I always say that I think it happened to me. Um, so or chose by me. chance, what do you mean? Um, so when I was 18 and sort of deciding about what I'm going to study um, the following year, I knew it had to be um, writing, but I didn't know that writing um, could, you could study like African literature, for example. Um, but I was definitely interested in literature. Um, so I applied for journalism um, and I got rejected for journalism. But a few months before that, um, I, in preparing for like an exam at school, I'd, um, I'd read something written, The Life and Death of Photojournalist Kevin Carter. So the term photojournalism uh, was new to me and this is when I was 19 or 18. So I was like, okay, came home to my mom. I was like, oh, when I study photography, I'm gonna major in photojournalism. And um, mm -hmm. so when I got rejected for journalism, uh, my mom found out about a school that, um, that teaches photography, but actually also that teaches photojournalism. So I ended up at the market photo workshop by chance. And the intention was just to do it for one year and then reapply for writing or for journalism. And it never happened because I fell in love with images. You didn't apply to no. literature. Or... Then you found your medium. Yeah, I think also because of my love for literature, I, I've always brought that into the work. So I think, you know, my, my whole thing is about telling stories. I've always loved storytelling. And so the work that I do allows me to do that. Um, and so that's why I felt like, what is, what's the point of going to study, um, you know, writing? Um, because I feel like I'm still writing. It's just I'm writing with images. I'm telling stories with images. That's a very interesting point because, of course, here in the Vevey, um, you are the winner of the Grand Prix and you were able to produce a work that is really between uh, fiction and reality. Somehow there is a kind of point about, you know, with the, your photograph that these people that are shown in the photograph exist, or in a way, but you bring us in a fiction also. What was your experience of developing this mix of, you know, documenting with photography and fictionalized? what these images would do? I think one of the, the, one of my earliest works actually touches on, you know, the fact that I only got exposed to African literature as a teenager. So, um, so I grew up on Western literature. Um, and so my discovery of, of literature really came at a point when um, maybe I was like 16, 17. And I fell in love with it because I could recognize myself in these stories. I could recognize my context being South Africa um, and being, being black in that context. Um, and, you know, because South Africa is also such a difficult place and a complex place to be living in, um, African literature made so much sense for me. And so with, the, with this work that I've produced, Staging Memories, it, um, it's based on a science fiction novel by a Malawan writer, and it's called Tao River. And he writes this fictional novel about South Africa. Um, and so in reading it, I mean, I discovered it maybe four years ago. Um, and when I discovered it, I, you know, I just, I just felt like it, it really was, um, I hadn't, I hadn't read like a science fiction novel from, from an African writer. And so that alone was, was really um, impressive for me. And so I then started to imagine it as, um, as an installation work, um, but as an installation work that still references that literary aspect um, by thinking around it as almost as a pop-up book. That's a very interesting point when we discover your work. You know, photography for many of us is something flat. Mm -hmm two-dimensional, uh, the way you construct your 
project is a sculptural, very sculptural, like you say, pop-up books. Mm -hmm. And also there's a movement, there's a something, it's, and also there's all this magic of things moving slowly, the shadows, like a shadow theater. Mm -hmm. So it brings you, as a viewer, really in a kind of other world where you are there just to be, you know, transported by that. And, and it goes not only with the images, but it goes also with the slow the motion. Mm -hmm. So how did you come from a photography, a two-dimensional two piece, to this sculpture, moving sculpture? So when I was, um, when I was a teenager, I was exposed to um, performance art. Um, and so the, you know, so I used to write um, a lot of poems and then we'd, you know, perform them and then also doing um, storytelling and then performing on stage and in theater. So that's, that's, that's basically my sort of introduction to stage um, when I was about 16. Um, and so when I, when I started making these, my first cardboard cutouts, it happened because when I was, let's say, 21. Um, when I'd finished my studies and I was working on, it was my first job, so I worked, when I'd finished my photography studies, I worked um, on set, um, on productions. So I worked on like these two soapies. Um, so I was the, the sort of resident photographer, but I was extremely fascinated with the set design mm -hmm. and like these worlds that were being, you know, built by like cardboards. Um, and that looked so real. That, that basically was how I started working with cardboard cutouts. So when I left um, working on set or on, um, on these television productions two years later, um, I then brought that into my, um, my artistic work. Um, so I then started building these life-size cardboard cutouts and, um, and I would perform in front of them. So, you know, so obviously the background of um, theater and performance on stage was being used with me in terms of me performing um, in front of these um, sets that I started to make and these worlds that I was building. But also in your work, what is interesting is that you don't pretend to hide, you know, the, the setting. It's, it's the, the mechanism and everything. You can even go behind and, and see how it is. So that's also another way of, you know, usually you, 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 are, you are looking in a theater and you go into a kind of fictional world mm -hmm. and you forget that you are in a theater, but here you make sure that people don't forget that they are looking at a mechanism and that is still uh, constructed. It's a, it's a set that is completely constructed. I mean, I think that that's definitely an important part of my process. Um, you know, the, my practice is thinking around um, sort of memory and fantasy. It is thinking about sort of this idea of um, that there isn't like an ultimate truth um, and that photography doesn't represent an ultimate truth, you know. Um, so, you know, so this idea of like this constructed history, this constructed memory um, or partly constructed is really what, um, what the work or even my display of how, you know, the sort of choices that I make when I'm displaying the work or making it, um, that's what it's, it's made from. I have a final question and we are here in a place where we celebrate art. Um, so tonight you could have dinner and invite a guest, okay. some, someone very special. Mm -hmm. Who would that be? That could be someone living or dead, that could be an artist, that could be philosopher, musician, or anybody. Who would that be here mm. in Vevey? In Vevey? For this tête-à-tête -tête dinner. Wow, that's such a, that's such a loaded question um, because it really is, um, it's a moment that I think so many people have contributed to. Um, so last week in South Africa, I had a celebration dinner with my mentors um, and, you know, my team and people that have really, you know, shaped me um, or shaped my, my thinking, shaped my process, um, you know, and because this is such an important moment for me as an artist, I, I recognize that all of it would not have been possible with all the different mentors that have provided different, you know, um, advices. Um, and so I really believe that I come from a really good community of, 
of artists and people that it would be so difficult to choose one person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I'd want to celebrate with so many. With all these people. <laughs> and, and it's very nice what you said, because also for me, it's also to pay homage to all the people who have an influence on your life and that you don't are alone and that you are an individual with a lot of things, that all the experiences you have from other people and the direction the, that you take with many different people during your life so that's uh... I mean I think I really believe in mentorship mm -hmm. um, honestly in, in, in retrospect um, I am like I definitely would not be where I am had it not been for um, for the different mentors I've had um, and that's something that I, I wish other young artists can can have um, people that really are honestly there in their lives to try and shape shape their careers and shape them as people mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Liberhan. <laughs>